Hi there, Tracy from Kazadan's Equestrian. Welcome to my channel. This week, I'm going to have a look at horses and what happens when they tie up. Hey, before I get on to the topic, I'd just like, if you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. Um, please have a look around and don't forget to subscribe like, click that notification bell and share my videos wherever you can. Any support I get helps me keep this channel going and I'm so passionate about us horse owners getting um, accurate information in ways that's easy to digest. That, that's the reason I do this and if I can get support to keep that going it would be wonderful. Okay so tying up is really a, a, a syndrome or disease where the muscles in a horse start to break down and are damaged. There are actually many different causes for a horse tying up. There are some diseases, um, some genetic mutations, and this is why there is confusion about how to deal with your horse if you have been told it is tying up. So tying up is more correctly called rhabdomyolysis, and it really is the breakdown of muscle tissue. As this tissue breaks down, um, there's things that are released into the horse's bloodstream and they can become toxic, upset kidneys, but they also provide us some really good markers as to what the reasons for your horse tying up could be. But because there is more than one reason, there's also more than one way to stop your horse tying up. Um, and it's asking somebody else who has a horse like this if it's not been diagnosed properly is a bit like asking somebody what they did with their horse that had a swollen leg. Unless you know why the leg is swollen, you're going to want to treat that in different ways. And the same is for tying up. Muscles are really quite complex beasts and um, they require specific proteins, a particular balance of electrolytes and also particular sugars to be able to make the muscle function correctly. During an episode of tying up or rhabdomyolysis, the horse essentially gets really painful muscle contractions that just keep going on. It would feel similar to us if we were having random cramps constantly and painfully over our body. That's what the, the traditional tying up feels or appears like to a horse. Very typically they look stiff, very sweaty and they're quite reluctant to move. By the way, don't force them to move, um, but they do look quite reluctant to go forward and they actually look in pain. An episode, an obvious episode of tying up like this really does require veterinary intervention. So please um, don't go Googling everywhere. If your horse is looking distressed, get on the phone to your vet as soon as you can. So the muscles during this episode are actually getting damaged and contents of those muscle cells, as I said, start leaking into the bloodstream. So this is one of the ways that a vet can tell you definitely or not whether your horse has tied up. They take bloods and look for elevated particular muscle enzymes. And if they're present, then they normally diagnose your horse as having tied up. So as I said, we really need to start looking at this as a symptom of something as opposed to a disease as itself. If you don't know what it is a symptom of, then you're not going to be able to treat your horse so it doesn't have these tying up episodes more frequently. The most frequently found is RER or recurrent exertional rhabdomyolysis, RER, or polysaccharide storage myopathy, which is PSSM. PSSM is found a lot in quarter horses, so they're the two most common diseases that cause a horse to tie up. Both of these types have very similar symptoms. So what you will see is a very shortened hind limb stride. So a horse will look like it's struggling to come through from behind. It does look very um, stiff around the croup and the loin, they may be quite painful to touch and sometimes you can actually see the muscles twitching. A high respiration rate, anxiety and sweating, they're the signs that your horse is having a very serious tying up episode. So where do we see these more often? RER we often see in stressed competition horses. So these are fit horses in a high stress situation so they're quite often 
um, thoroughbreds, Arabians, standard breds, quarter horses. Um, these are commonly affected, but it can absolutely occur in other breeds of horses. The classic case of this is when a horse that's on a particularly high grain diet has a rest from training for a couple of days and comes back into work and then experiences a tying up episode. This used to be called Monday morning disease. For these horses, if you need to add more energy and you can have a look at adding some oil into their diet, instead of adding the extra grains or concentrate or try and find yourself something that um, has a good fat content, has a good protein content, but is lower in the sugar. With PSSM, it's a little bit different. And the reason PSM is different is because Upon looking at a muscle biopsy, so taking a little small part of muscles and having a look at the cells and how the um, glycogen is stored in that tissue under a microscope actually helps us work out which type of tying up has occurred. And with PSSM, what they see in these biopsies is abnormal sugars that are stored in the muscle. But again, we need to break it down further because there's two types of PSSM. There's PSSM. M1 and PSSM2. In type 1, we're actually looking at a genetic mutation, so it's inherited. It's a genetic mutation that alters the storage of glycogen within the muscle. This mutation ends up causing the muscles to have a deficit of energy. But if you own a quarter horse that's having some tying up issues, it could be either RER. PSSM1 or PSSM2. PSSM2 also can occur in warm bloods, but it shows quite different um, clinical signs. With warm bloods, PSSM2 is not a specific glucose storage problem. And this means they don't normally benefit from the low non-structural carbohydrate type diet. So they need a different diet to other horses who have been diagnosed with some of these problems. What we want to change here is not to a low non-structural carbohydrate or low NSC, we want moderate NSC. So we don't want high levels but moderate. And in terms of fat, we don't necessarily want low fat, we want lower fat. These horses I'm talking about don't really exhibit the same type of symptoms. So if you have a warm blood who is suddenly becoming very exercise intolerant, they just seem re more reluctant to go forward. They're really reluctant to use those hind quarters. And these warm bloods tend to struggle when you reach a level of training where you're really asking for proper impulsion. And the cause for this PSSM is unknown. Now, just to make this a little bit trickier, I'm thinking as I go through this video, I'm going to have to do maybe a video on each specific type of tying up so that I can give you a little bit more detail. I guess what I really want you to know during this one is that there are different types and they do require different treatments, so you need to get it diagnosed. So just to confuse it a little bit more, warm bloods can sometimes get a whole different type of myopathy. Myopathy is um, weakness of the muscles. This one is actually called MFM, or myofibular myopathy. Some of the warm bloods that they thought had PSSM2, they have found to have this type of myopathy. Now this isn't even actually a true tying up. If you remember at the beginning of the video, I talked about a vet testing for particular muscle enzymes, um, which indicate that the muscle is getting broken down. This does not occur in this myopathy. What they're finding on the biopsies in these particular horses is Desmond or a particular protein buildup in the muscle cell. So obviously to diagnose this, your horse is going to need a muscle biopsy because all the symptoms look similar, but you really wanna know which one that is. So again, the signs are a little bit similar to PSSM. Um, losing, almost like losing fitness, or a horse that maybe gets to the age of about six to eight and seems to have hit their limit and can't really be trained or, or can't develop endurance any further than that. They definitely show a lack of stamina and an unwillingness to go forward yet again. These horses often have trouble collecting and they also have trouble sustaining a canter 
or going into a canter correctly. So if you've got this beautiful warm blood, you've hit about six to eight and you just can't get past this um, particular stage of training, they're not using their hind end properly, the canter leads are a little bit tricky and they just don't like holding themselves in canter, speak to your vet and perhaps try and get a muscle biopsy for MFM. So if you do get this diagnosed, they can, however, be um, fed on a diet very similar to PSSM2. The type of diet we're talking about here is a diet that is about fat content of about four to 6% of their concentrate, an NSC or sugars between 20 and 30%. And here we wanna look at a high protein supplement. And when I say it's not just about getting protein and working out, it's a proper bioavailable protein with a good amino acid profile is what these horses really need. In particular, you wanna be looking for supplements that have branch chain amino acids. These horses can sometimes benefit as well from um, a vitamin E supplement. As you can see some similarities, there are moments where you can actually, if it's mild, try changing the diet to see if you can relieve symptoms of your horse's um, exercise intolerance. And if you change the diet and you get a result, well then that's fantastic. If you're not getting a result, please, one of my big take home messages here is you do need to get a diagnosis happening so that you can get onto feeding your horse the right way for it. Don't assume that a tying up episode is just one type of tying up. Remember, it's a symptom of a number of different causes or diseases. True tying up is only the ones that show the elevated enzymes in blood tests taken by a vet. But if you are unsure, the vets can do these tests for the mutations and the genetic genetic inheritance factors within the blood of the horse. So I highly recommend you get that done. Um, sure, we don't necessarily know what is causing these yet, but we are getting a lot further down the road of how to treat that horse so you can keep them in work longer and do less damage to their muscles. And lastly, if your horse has had a tying up episode and it has recovered, please return them to work very slowly. Make sure your um, fitness regime is regular, not sporadic, and return them to work very slowly. I hope you've gotten some good information out of this video. Don't forget to ask questions down on the YouTube below if you want to. Um, and again, please subscribe, share, like, and click that notification bell so that you get notified when I release a video next week as well. Thanks and I'll see you next week.